Let's talk Tobago. Our people, our places, our challenges and achievements, our needs and aspirations. Join us as we continue our journey into the future. Hello and thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Tobago. This week we're coming to you again from the lovely Fort King George in Upper Scarborough. In our stories this week, flames go up in James Park as Tobago marks the 50th anniversary of this country's independence. National Gas Company to train Tobagonians for Cove operations. URP comes to the rescue of single mothers. Chief Secretary of London is honored by United Nations. And guess who walked away with the $2,000 first prize for best emancipation wear competition? Don't forget our new segment, Have Your Say with Lois Vincent, coming up later in the program. And you can now send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Please see the bottom of your screen for more contact details. Stay with us. We'll have these and more stories after the break. Dwayne Lyons, uh, name of our business is Exclusive Ideologies Limited. I started this business along with my wife Candice in 2005. We tried to expand and offer as much service, as many services. The overall process wasn't too hectic. Well, the grant helped us, well, put us up, upgrade the system. The next one was to get a, a air conditioning unit. You really need to go out and get yourself knowledgeable about what is up there because they really have a lot of opportunities out there. Redefining business, protecting Tobago's heritage. You cannot be truly emancipated except you are responsible for and in control of the major factors that influence your life. Speaking at the ceremony held for the lighting of the eternal flame at James Park Scarborough, Chief Secretary of London also said that emancipation and independence are very closely linked. Erected to mark the 50th anniversary of this country's independence, the eternal flame is strategically placed just beyond the statue of Tobago icon APT James, who started the process for Tobago's quest for independence. Speaking with the small and simple ceremony, Chief Administrator Dr. Ellis Burris said the flame represented more than 50 years of independence from British rule. Lighting of the eternal flame serves as a constant reminder of Tobago's common goal to self-determination and our resilience of our people. Linking the significance of choosing Emancipation Day to light the eternal flame, the Chief Secretary elaborated on what the flame represents for the people of Tobago. That eternal flame signifies to us that even if there is challenge, there is going to be continuity and there is going to be hope. And we in Tobago must understand that regardless of how desperate the times are, that there is going to be a light and there is going to be continuity and there is going to be hope. Rhysia Paul, Department of Information. Tobagonians are going to be trained by the National Gas Company to work in their new coal plant. These were some of the topics discussed by NGC executives and members of the Tobago House of Assembly who met recently at the Chief Secretary's Calder Hall office to discuss this and other issues. Sophie Guillaume has more. The development of a gas-based industry in Tobago, more jobs for Tobagonians, and TNT Cove plant to be gas-powered by year-end. These are the NGC's goals for Tobago. Committed to working with the THA, NGC will also be training Tobagonians to maintain their Cove processing plant. But more than that, when we bring gas to Tobago, what we are really doing is creating an opportunity for a gas-based industry to begin in developing in Tobago. More than that as well, there's the opportunity now, for example, to put CNG in our vehicles in Tobago. Uh, it's environmentally more friendly. That also creates another, you know, another avenue for developing and marketing Tobago as a green environment as far as tourism is concerned. The NGC president also looked at the timeline for converting the TNT plant at Cove from diesel to gas. Once the processing plant comes online by the end of the year, then there will be a process where, where the generators will one by one, so it's not going to happen 
over a one day or a two day period, it will be a phased in process where the generators will be one by one uh, taken out of a diet of diesel, uh, then given a diet of gas, tested, brought up online, and show it's fully reliable, it's all is well, and then we'll go through all of those generators. Mm -hmm. That process will take a few months, but come towards the end of this year, we will begin switching the generators, or TNTEC rather will be switching the generators from diesel to gas as NGC makes the gas available to TNTEC. Chief Secretary Orville London noted that this was a plus, as the first factory shell at Cove should be completed in August. We are also aware that with the supply of natural gas coming into Tobago, it makes, of course, the, the Cove Eco Industrial Park so much more attractive to potential investors. And we did get a commitment from Mr. Maharaj that uh, at present uh, the, 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 the gas pipeline work on that is completed and they are ready to, to deliver to, to tenants at, at the Cove Eco, Eco Industrial Plant. NGC is also prepared to work with NP to provide compressed natural gas for vehicles as the gas is available at Cove. Sophie Guillaume, Department of Information. A pioneer in his own right, Chief Secretary of London has been recognized by the United Nations Population Fund for his work in the area of family planning. Assistant UN Representative Tammy Yates made the presentation to the Chief Secretary at his Calder Hall office. The recognition comes as part of the UN's World Population Day celebrations. Sophie Guillaume has more. This year the theme was on universal access to reproductive health and we took the opportunity to recognize pioneers in Trinidad and Tobago who have really charted the way in sexual and reproductive health and particularly in family planning and of course HIV AIDS. And in Tobago um, we thought that the Chief Secretary was really um, undoubtedly one of those pioneers. The Chief Secretary was among seven honorees in Trinidad and Tobago. The UN Population Fund works in the areas of sexual and reproductive health, maternal mortality, and gender equality and empowerment. We also work with um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago in the area of population and development, and that is, as you would recall, the recently um, completed census in Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, supporting both technically and otherwise to ensure that, that um, the data collected is used um, as evidence for policy um, planning and intervention and program interventions. Yet said the UN would be happy to collaborate with the Division of Health and Social Services and the Family Planning Association to focus on a roving male health clinic, as men are less likely to see about their health. We've seen that um, we definitely need to ensure that men are partners in sexual and reproductive health, because unfortunately, um, you know, our men and, and boys do not have the health-seeking behaviors that will allow them to um, access these sort of services. And what has happened is that the programs, the interventions, have focused on women and girls. The Family Planning has, Association has a particular men's clinic that they do as well. The Ministry of Gender has done that in the past, the Gender Affairs Division, a male-specific health clinic, and the men have come out in droves because they see that it is more of a, um, an activity, a fun activity, and um, accessing information and not just health information. Sophie Guillaume, Department of Information. Helping women through employment opportunities. This is one of the hallmarks of the Unemployment Relief Program in Tobago, which falls under the directorship of the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities. The URP has been playing a lead role in getting single mothers out into the workforce, and its skills training program also sets it above the rest. The Unemployment Relief Program in Tobago forms part of the huge portfolio carried by the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities. This social program is multifaceted in structure and is geared to assisting citizens in the alleviation of poverty. The women's program contributes substantially in this area. As a single mother, it helped me to, to rent an apartment of my own and uh, you know, help do a lot of things. Just before I get involved in this URP program, I used to do domestic work. 
I am in the program at Bonacord, and um, we usually assist with the children on mornings before the, the teachers and they arrive. We sweep the corridors, we clean like on August vacation, July, August, and also whenever the school have any activities, we at Bonacord here, we help. Dolores Edwards is manager of the women's program to support mainly single mothers. The overall objective of the women's program is to assist the ladies because we realized there were so many single mothers who were unemployed. The program started in all the schools in Tobago. We have 340 workers in all. That's throughout all the schools. We have nursery school, and primary schools. The women's program is now being introduced to the home for the age. We realize now that, that we can give back to them for the contribution they have made in society. The unemployment relief program in Tobago employs over 1,600 persons per fortnight. Its activities are varied, ranging from construction, making of concrete products, joinery, agriculture, environmental cleanup, and skills training. By doing this kind of thing, we we help create employment for the unemployed, for somebody who is not employed. Um, some people who pass through here, they get an idea of how to go about producing seedlings, how to do some a little form of gardening. And so when they leave here, they could do it for their own selves and for the general public. They get something you don't have to run here and there you know that you could come to europe and get your seedlings and when you come in to get your seedlings probably you could get a finished product like a pak choy a cabbage a tomato whatever is available so all in all we we do help somehow what we try to do here in tobago is to ensure that the unemployment relief program doesn't only give you a fish for the present, but also to teach you how to fish. But we ensure that people have the opportunity to learn a skill, to learn a trade, so when they move on, they can be employable. And some of the very persons who have come from the program have been employers. Well, as the husband down and thing, I had nobody else to turn to, so I ran into um, URP. And Mr. Sandy tried to help me out by um, giving me all the, all the necessary particulars and things what to do and what to do. And I followed him right through. And here I am, I mean, they, they come and they give me a good little help, start the foundation and everything, material and everything. There are some things I had to buy, a lot of things I had to buy still, but they are going half and half with me and they're trying to help me out with the um, labor, most of all the labor, which is very important. I retire and I mean, uh, this thing really that don't fall in my life. I think well, the first few cents I had, I just paint out. Bus and all I had here to, to go by that are not blown up. URP has done great for me as a single mother. And I want to thank God, thank him for House of Assembly. Thank you, thank you, thank you for granting us this job. A cry for more opportunities. Youths of Roxborough Delaford rallied together to respond to their community's cry for more opportunities for young persons by hosting a youth empowerment seminar. Aimed at developing the minds and social living of the young people in the district of Roxborough Delaford, event coordinator Delia O'Neill said the initiative came about after much consultation with other young persons. I can say that as a young person working within this community, I have engaged myself in many meetings with the young people of this district. And I came to find that they believe that not enough opportunities and provisions are out there for the youth. Stressing that youths are the future of the nation, Area Representative Hilton Sandy said, it is important for young persons to have access to information and to be current with the job market. The problem today is that not getting information, you are not making good choices. The time has come 
when you have to revisit your thinking. The time has come when you have to think, not just because my friend is doing business, up, uh, business, that I must do business too. Not because my friend is a policeman, that I must be a policeman too. You have to look at the, even though you want to be this policeman, there may not be room for you now. But you have to study the job market. Often bashed for their lack of discipline, this young leader, Sharish Trotman O'Neill, on the contrary, emphasized the importance of discipline for youths to progress. All across Roxburgh, Delaford, doing big things, and our duty is to highlight them, and for those who are not yet doing big things, ensure that they do big things. As part of the information sharing segment, speakers came from the Department of Youth Affairs and Sport, CAMDI, and the Financial Literacy Secretariat. Our aim is to provide efficient service and support systems by focusing on the following areas of youth development. One, empowerment. Two, participation. Three, volunteerism. And four, capacity building. When you come to Camley, you meet with me, we have a discussion, not an interview, we have a discussion. So then we know exactly what are your needs and what else or in whatever area you can be assisted more. Within Camley, what we do, we give you an opportunity to choose what you like. So when you leave, you are happy and I am happy. We take a break. German oil, the name of the business is um, Nice Treatment. I had uh, one and two equipments, basically like pot and firecracker. I decided to uh, visit the office in Glen Road and I spoke to the um, staff there. But the main idea to you have something to follow up to start off your own business. It's a nice guest here to know that the, 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 the Tobey House has helped me assisting young entrepreneurs. Redefining business, protecting Tobago's heritage. Welcome back. It's now time for our special segment, Have Your Say with Lloyd Vincent. Curtains have now closed on the 2012 Tobago Heritage Festival. Now that we've all enjoyed what each village has to offer, what's your favorite tradition of yesteryear? The folk dancers, like the ballet, the bongo. One of my favorite traditions is like going on a camping trip, you know, having a, a nice time with my family on River Lime and cooking a nice pot and just relaxing with some nice off music. I am really attracted to the Heritage Festival in the area of the Pembroke Seraka Feast where they would um, pay particular attention to things that comes out of the dirt oven. For example, the tart, the pone, the bread, the cake and sweet bread. And um, to see this happen in what we call a dirt oven, comparing it to the modernized oven of today. Well, old school, grandmothers and stuff like that, you used to get two tap behind your head and you can't answer back. Nowadays, children and them answer back, the, aunt, the grandmother, auntie, anybody. It's something called Sam Sam, right? Chili baby, that's what most people call it, but I know it as Sam Sam, that's a long time name, right? It's a while now, I can do it some now. <laughs> Due to strong public-private partnerships in its response to HIV, the Jamaican government has kept its adult prevalence rate down to 1.7%. Should islands like Tobago follow and provide more opportunities to those living with HIV or implement greater measures to reduce stigma against such persons? Omadara Mills reports from the 19th International AIDS Conference in Washington, D.C. on measures which can aid in sustainable development while responding to HIV.
with the increased need for HIV funding in the Caribbean while maintaining economic growth, Jamaica's Minister of Health, Fenton Ferguson, indicated that public-private collaboration is beneficial in the treatment and prevention of HIV as he addressed the theme Sustainable Development and HIV, a Caribbean Agenda at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C. The government of Jamaica recognized the need for multi-sectoral involvement and assured the participation of key government ministries and the civil society in its various programs. This multi-sectoral response has succeeded in keeping adult HIV prevalence at a stable level of approximately 1.5% in the mid-90s to an estimated high of 1.7 today. Research director Dawn goddard Eckrich shared her views on how islands such as Tobago can create better opportunities for persons living with HIV. Well, the private sector definitely needs to be involved because a large number of people are involved in the private sector employed and um, funding can also come from the private sector. I think a lot of programs should be worked not just from government but also in the private sector and as a whole collaboration. Jamaica, like Tobago, has made progress in the elimination of mother-to-child transmission, HIV treatment through integrated primary health care, and reduction in stigma against persons living with HIV. All measures which can aid in the economic development of these islands. But there is still more to be done in turning the tide against HIV while sustaining growth. I am Amadara Mills reporting from the International AIDS Conference in Washington, D.C. on behalf of the Department of Information and the Caribbean Broadcast Media Partnership. Colors, movement, action was the theme that appropriately described Tobago Underwater Carnival 2012. The event aimed at showcasing the beauty of what lies under the sea at the various dive sites across the island. A number of underwater photographers, editors and writers from international dive magazines jumped at the opportunity to capture the life of the ocean. Here's Julia James from the Division of Tourism and Transportation with the story. Colors, movement, action was the theme that appropriately describes Tobago Underwater Carnival 2012. The event aimed at showcasing the beauty of what lies underneath the sea at the various dive sites across the island. A number of underwater photographers, editors and writers from international dive magazines jumped at the opportunity to capture the life of the ocean. Diver and underwater cinematographer Peter Craw was in high praises of Tobago's reefs. Tobago is really quite an amazing place uh, compared to the rest of the Caribbean. There is, there's so much life here that uh, you don't see in most other places. The reefs are chock full of sponges. They're extremely colorful, which you'll see in the, uh, in the video. There is fish life on all the dive sites. From We did, we did miss the really big guys, the mantas and the hammerheads, but the uh, toppins and all the way down to the silver sides. There is cryptic crabs. There's uh, all the cephalopods. There was octopus everywhere. Uh, I was in the Bahamas four years ago on a film shoot and we were trying to find an octopus to film it tent feeding at night. And we couldn't find one. We were out three nights in a row and we never found one. Here we stumbled over them several times uh, at, during the day and also at night. Uh, there's squid on the reef, there's basket stars everywhere. The, the diving here is, is really plentiful. These views were also shared by other professionals of the dive niche. Some of them first time visitors to the island. Uh, the blue water was awfully nice and we got to dive both ends of the island which was very cool. We dove three times on the wreck or twice on the wreck at this point. We're going to dive one more time on the Maverick down here. Got to see some of the local reefs down here in the south and up at Bayside and Sister. So we've kind of seen a, a hit list this, uh, what? A, a hit list this, this week of, of our, our Tobagonian favorites. And I like, I like being an honorary citizen because uh, it's an incredible place to travel to. I am the uh, editor-in-chief of Sport Diver magazine. Um, and like David, this was my first time to Tobago. Uh, it took me quite a while to get here, actually. It took me about uh, 16 or 17 hours just to get down here. And normally from California, that's the kind of, that kind of journey will take you to a place like the Indo-Pacific. 
Um, and when I first dropped in on that, on that blackjack reef up in Speyside, I was just amazed. I mean, I thought, you know, this looks like the Indo-Pacific with the, with the healthy reefs, the gigantic barrel sponges, just the number of soft corals and, and hard corals. It was just, it was also healthy. Um, when I come to a place for the first time, I always like to, to see what the, re what I like to see based on, a, on what my readers would like. Um, you know, I, I want to, I want to, Get the get the sense of the, the destination from from their point of view, um, and I think I got that. I mean, uh, you know, d d despite the fact that we had four four different dive operators, you know, uh, Swiss at Manta Ray, uh, Aquamarine, we also had extra divers and um, RNC. Uh, I never felt rushed during this trip. I always felt like there was this really relaxed uh, this relaxed atmosphere, um, going from dive to dive, and that's the kind of vacation. That's the kind of holiday that most. Of our readers want they just want to they want to know that they can go to a place and they can relax and enjoy themselves in such a small area little, little tiny tobago almost every dive set you go on is full of marine life full of healthy reefs you don't see any bleaching and when the coral hair bleaches it recovers very quickly so they don't actually end up dying off which is something lovely to see because you know majority of the caribbean has um well a lot of the corals have died already so it's, it's just really nice and then the marine life here is fantastic However, environmentalist and diver David Jones was quick to point out that particular attention should be taken to maintain our healthy reefs. So I've never actually been to Tobago before, so they had a slight advantage, they knew what to expect. So I was just told, right, okay, currents. They weren't wrong. Um, there's some pretty awesome currents around here, but actually what, from my environmentalist perspective, what's nice about that is that that is what gives this place the life. This is what I think gives the underwater world its, its healthiness. It is a very, very healthy underwater environment. From an environmental point of view, it's good here. It's good. An added feature to the underwater experience was the angelfish challenge. Divers had to seek out and photograph the six types of angelfish that inhabit the island's reefs. The winner of the challenge, Swiss Robinson, a certified diver from age 12, was the only diver that was able to photograph all six, which include the Queen Angelfish, the Grey Angelfish, Rock Beauty, the French Angelfish, the Caribbean Flameback, and the Cherub Angelfish. Robinson said that although he enjoyed the challenge, it took him five days to find all species of this popular sea beauty. They, they don't stay still at all. Uh, actually, in the video that they had there, you will see that they don't, they don't ever sit up for you to make an easy shot. Um, but funny enough, I was so focused on getting those shots because I knew those would be the hardest that uh, my other shots I have the Queen and stuff weren't exactly the best I've ever taken. But yeah, it was fun. It was challenging, which I liked because it's very, um, I don't say it's hard to get all six, but in a short period of time and to get good shots, is, it can be a difficult challenge. It's, I got my last picture on the last last dive, <laughs> which was lucky, which was of the, um, the cherub and the flame back. So that, that was, I was quite lucky with that. The underwater event also incorporated tri-dive sessions at the YMCA pool. A brief introduction to diving and the appropriate use of gear was conducted by local professional diver Alvin Douglas. This aspect to give children and other participants at the pool a hands-on approach to diving. Tobago Underwater Carnival 2012 was held in collaboration with the Division of Tourism and the Transportation and the Association of Tobago Dive Operators. I am Julia James, Division of Tourism and the Transportation. Botswana's Princess of the Bantu Tribe, Queen Thai, African National Pride. Full African regalia was on show as staff of the THA competed to see who would walk away with the $2,000 female first prize and $1,500 male first prize at the Emancipation Wear competition. The stiff head wraps made the competition even stiffer, as the women were also able to vie for best head wrap. Put on by the events committee of the Office of the Chief Secretary, the Emancipation Wear competition turned out to be a rare hit among staff especially as the stakes were raised this year with increased sponsorship from the Tobago business community. Coming in at third place for the best head wrap was Maud Lewis Lord. She was outdone by Cherise Alfred who placed second and the pair represented the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. But it was African Queen Irina Balfour from the Accounts Unit who went home with the $500 first prize for best head wrap. 
Nubian princess, royal queen, you name it. She was all of them that evening, uncupping best emancipation female way, and the $2,000 first prize was Urena Balfour again. She was closely followed by Celia Agard Lewis and Maud Lewis Lord in the second and third positions, respectively. The men were not going to be outdone by their black beauties, as they too showed off their African roots in dress. Coming in third to win $500 was Dr. Elton Bob, while Dion Virgil walked away with a $700 second prize. But it was Lennox Alfred, all dressed in white, who received the judge's nod of approval for the $1,000 first prize. Reese Paul, Department of Information. That brings us to the end of another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. As we go, we leave you with some performances from the African Unity and Drum Festival of the Tobago Heritage Festival at the Montgomery Recreation Grounds. See you next week. <laughs>